Hi, welcome back to my channel. I have a guest. This is Emma Gunnar Wardener of The Emma Guns Show. Because so many of you have asked me to talk about hair loss and thinning hair. And I think it's because I've gone through a journey where I had a disastrous haircut and I talked about my weaves. <laughs> There's my weaves, look, let me get them out. I've only got two left now, I did have four. And I've got four, I've only got two tape extensions in now. So I've got really fine hair and it drives me mad. But this is my friend Emma. And Emma has not only fine hair, but she has thinning hair. And I thought, how can I answer the questions on thinning and fine hair? I need to get an expert. Well, <laughs> someone who's dealt with it, come to terms with it, then not come to terms with it, then been upset about it, then come to terms with it again. Exactly. It's an emotional roller coaster. It, well, I know that you're really conscious of it because we've been really honest and open about it in Hence the past. My parting. Hence your party. It's very, very specific. <laughs> so let's talk about when you first started suffering from thinning hair and fine hair. Oh gosh. Because your hair is as thick as mine at the bottom. Yeah. But it's much finer through the crown, isn't it? There's basically, if you were to sort of mark an arrow like that. Yeah. All of that's quite dense. It's fine, but it's quite dense. It's hair forward is, 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 is a lot thinner. And when it's hormonally driven, is it? So when did it first happen? So uh, I started noticing it when I was in my early teens. But it was, I wasn't diagnosed with PCOS until I was 17. Polycystic ovary syndrome. Syndrome, syndrome yeah. Um, but, but I displayed the symptoms from like 11 upwards. And part of it was just- From when your periods first started then? No, because my period started when I was 13. I was slightly oh. late. I think it was 12 or 13, I can't really remember. It's a long time That ago. was early for my generation and it's late for hers. I started my periods when I was 15. Do you know what, it probably was the fact- Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe it was just because I was the latest in the class and I felt behind everyone else. But like I, I had um, body hair and my boob developed and I had all the all the sort Sym of symptoms, symptoms or yeah. signs of womanhood. But I hadn't got my period for a while. And then there was these little patches mostly around like above my ears and always this sort of area. And Which is the only bit that people can see. Yeah. I mean, oh, it's so annoying. And when I was a kid, there are pictures of me when I'm... I mean, I'm talking a young kid, like three, four, five, where I had the densest fringe. I mean, it was pulled back from there and it was like a big, thick, gorgeous. So it was definitely hormonal. Yeah, it was definitely. My hair's not been the same since. And it was just one of those things that you go to the doctor and you think, oh, I'm having, experiencing some issues with my hair. And they sort of look at you and they go, oh, so what? So what? Who cares? Kind of thing. Then when you became a beauty editor, I always think it's really interesting because when I did this talk with Jo Jones and we talked about her skin, she said as a beauty PR, it's unforgivable to have bad skin. Mm. And as a beauty editor, you're not really supposed to have thin or fine hair, are you? You're no. supposed to have the secret to active ingredient to the whole world and it's just not fair. So is that, you went to see what, a trichologist? So I'd have like consultations and basically, all of them just confirmed, yes, your hair is thinner from here forward. And like, I already knew that. And having it confirmed just was like a- So what have you tried over the years? All sorts of shampoos and basically everything topical, as well as trying to find- But you've never tried minoxidil. I just asked you if you tried minoxidil, which is a uh, regain in the UK, which is clinically proven. It's a drug that you buy over the counter. And you said, very interesting, which is so typical of you, because I get to know you better and better. I didn't want to try it just in case I couldn't get hold of it anymore and then I'd want to keep using it and I couldn't keep using it. So you hadn't tried minoxidil, mm -hmm. but you'd been on hormone stabilizers, hadn't you? Yeah, so, and it was one of those things- And like, your hair didn't get thicker after you started sorting out your PCOS? A little bit, but it is, I mean, it is definitely thinner at the front. And it's one of those things of, when you have polycystic ovarian syndrome and there, there's the PCO and there's PCOS. And so I was dealing with like as a teen, terrible acne, awful facial hair, massive weight gain, had no energy, no attention span, in kind of like the scale of all the things that you're Your having to hair deal with. It was like, oh, I can pile. and also I'd get bollocked all the time at school for not wearing my hair up. Because if I wore my hair up, I felt very exposed. My face looked fatty. You could see my acne. You could see my sideburns. So, <laughs> Another video coming later about facial hair. You're going to love this one as well. So yeah, I guess out of all of them on a sliding scale, my hair wasn't the worst. I mean, like having to wear a certain type of parting. Yeah. Big work. Right, what have that. you tried? So you've tried every so, single thickening shampoo, conditioner. Exactly. And I think, I think when you have something like thinning hair or acne or whatever it might be, you come at it from an emotional angle. 
And so if something works, and it, especially if it gives you that instant hit, you just you just dive towards it. So yeah, I you tried supplements, but supplements yeah. didn't work. So what I so I never went down the what's the active ingredient route, which I realise is foolish. I went down the um, buying the claims off the bottom the dream. route. Yeah. I, I bought the dream. That's what the average consumer does, though. Exactly. So, so at no point did any of your doctors say to you, or any trichologist say to you, let's give you a full blood workout. Because the first bits of advice I ever give to anybody that either has sudden hair loss or thinning hair is there are two things you need to check. One, you need to check, and I've said this to you before, and I'm still not sure if you've actually checked it. You My need to check your right. thyroid function. Because a really good friend of mine, Mel Fernandez, started mm. losing her hair massively and she went to loads of people and she works in the hair industry. Sorry Mel for a shout out of this, an accidental shout out on this video. And she said, I don't know what to do. And I said, you need to go to your doctors and you need to check your thyroid function. And she nagged and nagged and nagged a GP and she had her thyroid function done and her thyroid function wasn't working properly. You need to have your thyroid function tested to make out, make sure it's not either over functioning mm. or under functioning. And then the other one is you need to check your stored iron levels, that is your ferritin levels because it's your blood because basically your hair is so inessential to your body that if you're low in iron levels which a lot of women are they tend to shed their hair a lot so at no point you had a blood test for your either iron function your iron your thyroid function or your iron levels no and again again coming at it from the emotional consumer side of it that stuff's expensive yeah and when i can style my hair over it's a real luxury to pay a few hundred pounds to go and get that done because that's realistically what it costs because my GP did loads of tests, but at a certain point they stop, they stop yeah. giving you blood tests and also... And your hair isn't considered essential to anything, it's like skin, isn't it? And also the other thing is, is that the normal ranges that you get in GP so blood broad. tests would not highlight an issue anyway. So I could take that result and show it to an expert who would say, oh no, that's a red flag, but the GP will just be like, no, yeah. it's normal. So there was, there was lots of stuff and so yeah, I just, I tried to find the dream. So what? Do you actually love what works for you? Because I have to say, in the last six months, I think your hair has got thicker. It looks thicker and mm. it looks healthier. So about six, seven, eight months ago, something like that. By the way, I asked her earlier on if she tried any supplements and she did, she said they made no difference at all. She has a really healthy diet. So it's not like you're eating junk food and eating on the run and anything like that. I think you lead a really healthy lifestyle. You exercise regularly, you sleep properly, and I think you eat really well. Yes. So it's not caused by a nutritional deficiency no, at all? No, I could do with more veg. I am aware of okay. that. I am, I am quite bad. And so. you are quite a stressy person. Yeah, no, I am. Yeah, which will go on to one of the active ingredients I just looked up on one of the products. <laughs> but anyway, go on. So about eight months ago, I was taking headshots. <laughs> and rather than pay someone else to do it, I was like, I could do this. So I was in my flat, set up lights like we've got here, and I was taking a selfie. <laughs> it was a selfie and um, I'd done my hair really nicely I'd kind of done it in a similar style to where I've done it here and in between shots I'd been doing this with the um, remote, control. remote control and I'd looked down to get something <laughs> and you accidentally took the top of your head and I accidentally took the top of my head and I thought actually that's worth posting and so I posted it and I was like look you can see there's a gap in my hair and I style it, I do this, I've used thickening lotions, I have coloured in my scalp with eyeshadow, but this is the reality and it's a really horrible thing. It can make you feel very exposed, it can make you feel very unfeminine, it can make you feel not particularly sexy. It makes you feel, when you're, I don't know, when you're out and you're trying to work, hustle, be with your mates, if you think that they're looking at the top of your head, it, it just puts you on edge. So, oh, and that's why your podcast is so important and that's why, because you're really honest and about the journey. Yes, yeah, so on the back of that, my oxen got in touch with me. They were getting people to talk about the emotional side of hair loss, hair thinning, etc. And, and you'd never tried nioxin at all? Right, I had and I hadn't got on with it. Oh, so you had tried nioxin but not properly? I tried it and I didn't get on with it, but I wouldn't, I didn't want to use the conditioner on my scalp because when you've got fine hair, anything like that, that is silky soft. You, for me, I need to keep it away from my roots because it kills any chance of me getting any root lift um, when I blow dry, or it means I have to use so much product that 
I then have to wash my hair the next day because I don't know about you, products like Magnet, it just pulls fluff out of the air into your roots. Um, also, yeah. you turn around and you go, I like my hair to be in quite bad condition and dehydrated because then it's got more body. Yeah, it yeah. does. True, yeah. totally. So have you got five steps to this or three steps to this? Right, so there are three, ultimately. So so basically... This isn't sponsored by Nioxin, no, no. it's just that she's a bit evangelical about it now. <laughs> so you've got your shampoo... So you do your little like wash off the product and then you do a proper one that you leave it on for. Then you've got this and this is what you massage into the scalp and leave on. So you wash your hair and then I put that on. <laughs> what does it that's think? Quite, yeah, it's quite what? minty that is. Yeah, because you want they want your scalp to tingle. I know that, I can see through that already. That's to get your... So super lightweight though, it's not heavy and occlusive or oily or anything like that. And it washes out quite easily. So you leave that on, so I leave that on for a couple of minutes while I wash my body, shave my legs, arms, face, whatever else. <laughs> it's actually got ingredients in to exfoliate your scalp because the whole idea of mm. a nioxin is they're saying that heavy use of styling products and a lot of silicon based things occlude the scalp yeah. and suffocate the hair follicles. Yeah. So it's actually designed to exfoliate. It's almost like using, it's not like using an acid toner, but it's almost like using an acid toner and exfoliating your skin. You ex yeah. almost exfoliate and deep cleanse so your I scalp, don't you? I remember when we went to that first launch and they were, they were basically saying, if your follicle's actually this big, and <laughs> this is gonna look dodgy on video, but it's so clogged up that a hair that's only that big can get through, but actually it's capable of a bigger... Do you see what I'm doing yeah. here? I realise it's a bit dodgy, but I... That's a good gift. We should, we should create that as a gift. <laughs> and I remember thinking, I don't want a refined scalp. I don't want refined follicles. I want more hair and I want it to be thicker. And really having like a... What's the girl from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? A Veruca Salt, Veruca Salt. Yeah, just... but that's because it's visceral for you. It's, it's a proper emotive reaction, isn't so it? So then you use that those two in the shower and then when you come out of the shower, towel dry your hair and then you massage some of this, which is a foam, into the scalp. Oh, I like the idea of a foam though, you see, because a foam doesn't seem like it's going to weigh the hair down. It's also... Um, a foam. There are lots of different kits, by the way. This is the kit for coloured hair. Yeah, so this is this is progressed thinning, and this is for because it's got colour lock technology. When I they say progressed hair. thinning, they just mean chronic, like you've had thinning hair for a long time, it hasn't suddenly happened. Yeah, so there's no, uh, normal thinning. What's it called now? Normal thinning, light thinning, and progressed thinning. Okay. And so I had a scalp when I went to that Myoxin panel. I they did a scalp analysis, and they said, yeah, you need you need for progressed. That's a that's a foam that very quickly turns to liquid. A very like yeah alcohol feeling liquid so it almost like evaporates so then you use that and that's what you use in the shower and how long have you been out. using it for since the middle of november because it was seven months now. right at the beginning of 40 days of 40. how much do you think your hair's improved by <sighs> well, um percentage see again i can't answer from a percentage point of view i can answer from an emotional point of view in that oh. I have confidence in my hair now, like I'll swing it around in a way mm. that I wouldn't before. And I don't think And also I think it's that. grown. Mm. So the active ingredients in Nioxin are <laughs> so basically the idea is it, it deep cleanses the scalp. So everything is designed to cleanse the follicle out of excess sebum and styling products and all those things. And then two main active ingredients are phospholipid, which is a conditioning agent to soften and hydrate the scalp, but without occluding it and something called saw palmetto. And saw palmetto actually is a supplement. It's a plant extract that is slightly contentious, but it's supposed to be a testosterone blocker. And do you know why you need a testosterone blocker? Because testosterone kill Cause males pattern baldness, yeah. 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 That. Well, when I was a teenager and I finally got diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome, my testosterone levels were <laughs> super high. Yeah. yeah. So a woman ends up having the same pattern of baldness that a man would get. And then you asked me if there was anything else I was using outside of Nioxin and I bought the texture spray, which you know I'm a big fan of. It's the Percy and Reed one, isn't it? It just gives... It's their new salt spray, isn't it? But it's a salt spray that doesn't make your hair feel crusty. It, it just... It's all through. I've used it from the nape of the neck down and feel... There's, you don't think it's got... It's got a slight feeling to it, but it's not like a traditional salt no. spray at all. So I'm also, you like your wet brush because it doesn't rip your hair out. Yep. Yeah, so even if my hair is... I mean, I use an Aquis towel, you know, one of those ones that... <laughs> your, ooh, your hair is so high maintenance. <laughs> I mean, like, I have, I mean, only just because I got one recently, but previously I just used a towel. But I, yeah, take a bit yeah, of Yeah, they're basically microfiber towels. Yeah. And then use the wet brush and it doesn't pull or... Or tangle up, because you, any hair that's growing back, you don't want to pull out. Have you noticed any regrowth? Oh, I'm glad you asked, actually. I don't want to 
I don't want to get my face very close to the camera, but do you see there? Yes. There's like a load of inch, lo well I say a load, there's like four inch long hairs. Can you confirm? Yeah, they are. They are new. And they're in a little divot of hair loss. Go in really close and let's see if it'll focus on you. <laughs> You're losing the light now, so I have to stay there. There you go, stay there. So it's there. It's here. I can even feel them. When I did that, they were spiky. So there's one. I need to take that focus off of me. Can I get out there? Yeah, you go, it's there's one, you. and I'm pulling it. And Don't if it comes it out, I'll be so upset. <laughs> but those are new hairs that never, because that is a little divot of hair loss, and that's how I do my parting. But yeah, there's a few little new hairs. So if there are some there, there must be some within the bulk of the hair as well. So I think it's interesting because it's not like Nuoxin has any drugs in it at all. It's more about optimising your health of your scalp. Right. So we'll put all the details of the Nioxin products down below. We'll put all the wet brush products down below. Yeah. We'll put Percy the Reed. Percy and Reed product down below. Um, so what I want to know is, have you been on a similar journey? Do you suffer from hormone related or stress related thinning hair? And have you tried anything that works? Because I think if you can answer each other's questions and offer each other advice, then it's a win-win-win situation. And the reason I wanted Emma to come on is because as you can see, she's lived it she knows what works and what works for her is the nioxin mm -hmm. step rip stepped three five steps. steps three, three steps. steps with some five styling steps. steps five step system <laughs> so let me know what you think let me try know if you've tried any products and i will put the links to all the products below thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and i'll get her back and we will talk about not thinning hair here but too much hair here <laughs> oh the joys are getting older <sighs>